Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Brett and I, Millimeter USA here, and this is going to be a review of the Ivor Johnson Hawk Polished Commander Size 1911. This production 1911 is a carry size and full of features at a pretty attractive price. We shot about 300 rounds of 6 hour elite performance ammunition through this 1911 during this review, and it's currently in a Tucker gun leather holster with the USMC emblem on it. And that review is coming up next. The ammo is supplied by Elite Performance Ammunition from Sig Sauer. This is their 45 ACP ammo, 230 grain, traveling at 850 feet per second and 369 foot pounds. All right, Ivor Johnson, Hawk Polish 1911, first rounds. Commander size 1911. Stock mag first, that comes with the gun. Hundred percent so far. Checkmate mag. The mag is seized in the gun, it's empty though. There we go. That was weird. Another mag, this is an Elander. Guys, this Ivor Johnson 1911 is a production version 1911 put together in the Philippines. We think they did a decent job on it overall considering the price and everything that's involved with this Ivor Johnson. The weight on the pistol itself is 38 ounces because it is a steel slide and steel frame here. The 38 ounces does do a pretty good job of taming that 45 ACP. So you've got a 1911 that should last many thousands of rounds considering it's all steel design. The commander size is a great size for CCW as long as you can manage it, but at 38 ounces it is a little bit heavy for CCW in my opinion. This IT-11 does have a pretty tight slide to frame fitment as you can see. There are some gaps that you'll be able to see like on the sides and stuff, but considering the price point that this IT-11 comes in, not bad. These 1911s as Britta Singer mentioned are made in the Philippines and then they are inspected when they reach Ivor Johnson in Florida. The 1911 has a decent fit and blended high-rise beaver tail. You could see the little bit of movement here side to side and how it's fit to the frame right here when it's pressed in. You can see a little bit of a gap on the sides. It's not bad. You can see that right there. A little bit of overhang on the beaver tail on this side. When I was shooting it, I noticed I was getting a little bit of beaver tail bite in my web in my hand, which was kind of a little bit weird, but but again, considering the price point this 1911 comes in, it's not bad. On top of the high-rise beaver tail, you do have a skeletonized style hammer, and you do have an extended slide stop right here, which is a nice feature to have. I'm going to see how it does for me. It does not like the Sig Sauer. I think they're checkmate mags. Yep. It will not eject them even when the magazine is empty. So that's why we do a lot of testing and test different magazines is to see if you're having any issues. Okay, it did not feed it all the way. heavier than I'm used to with the 1911. Out of the Neomag for reload. Show it. Just didn't feed it all the way. It's got it at the top of the magazine. Okay. All right, a couple more things to cover here. The 1911 is traditional in that it has a GI style guide rod assembly in it. 
and it is a Series 70 1911, so you don't have a firing pin block safety back there. This 1911 does have a vertical mainspring housing on it. No serrations or checkering on the front strap, so that is a cost-cutting measure right there. Kind of sad to see, but again, the price you're paying for this, you can't really complain. Chip McCormick Power Plus 10 round mag. And last mag for me right now, another one of those uh, checkmate mags. We'll see if this one wants to drop free or not. Nope. Seriously, I have to depress that mag release to get it out. Today's video is sponsored by Core Essentials. Core Essentials makes one of the best gun belts on the market today. I've been using their gun belt products since 2016. I thoroughly believe in their belt products, and that's why we are excited to work with them now. I'm currently using the new tactical reinforced nylon belt from Core Essentials. The nylon webbing outer layer is rated up to 500 pounds. It is a very strong belt. The reinforced power core center and super fiber inner lining make this unique belt durable and stiff enough to support small to medium to even larger handguns. The belt itself is rated up to eight pounds maximum. Of course, I am exceeding that with my duty belt set up here. This is what the belt looks like while wearing my duty belt over top of it. And guys, here's the core belt being used inside of a full duty belt. So it's strong enough to support that. It's definitely strong enough to support your CCW firearm. So now let's cover the belts and go over the system and the buckles themselves. All of Core's belts are 800% more adjustable than your old traditional belts. These track line belts have over 40 sizing positions to choose from. You just pull the extra belt material through the buckle and you get that precise fit. You can press the belt buckles quick release tab to loosen the belt. These features make it very easy to find that perfect fit no matter what your size. The adjustments in the belts track is made every quarter of an inch making it very versatile indeed. The track is hidden when you wear the belt and the track is nearly indestructible. We do not see any wear on the track belts that we have been using for over a year. The belt secured the buckle using the teeth clamps and two set screws. You've got classic style buckle designs here that do not scream tactical belt because no one needs to know you're carrying a concealed weapon. Core Essentials offers a 30 day money back guarantee and a one year warranty on their products. My current setup is running the X4 stainless steel buckle and a tactical reinforced gun belt. The whole package goes for a little bit less than $63 after you use the discount code B9USA. That's a real value and a good product that I have tested over time and I highly recommend it to you guys. I will be buying several more belts coming up and giving them away as gifts, be it for a birthday or for Christmas season. So here's the two different color belts that are available from Core Essentials. As far as taking your gun on or off as a concealed carry person, right underneath here is the release. And it's that easy. Very strong belt. Putting it back on. And this excellent leather holster right here. And that's right guys, I've switched over to the Dan Wesson for a concealed carry handgun. Feed it through the belt buckle, and then just grab it from this end here, and pull. And you're good to go. There is no slag in this belt, it holds it really tight to your hip right here. As you can see, it sucks this 1911 up right up against my hip. This is not a light overall package right here, and the belt does an excellent job. If you do place your order, guys, make sure you use the B9USA discount code and save 10% off your entire order. Okay, guys, one thing I did want to cover is this full-size safety. The size of itself, the width of it, is nice, and it's uh, pretty good to ride your thumb over when you're shooting the pistol. But one thing I did have a concern about was exactly how easy it was to actually activate and deactivate. If you're shooting and you're one of those guys that don't ride over the safety all the time, you might get to a position where you're shooting and then accidentally put a little bit of pressure and it doesn't require much as you can see. 
and you'll accidentally put your gun on safety when you don't want it that way. I guess if you concentrate and you fire like I do with the always over it, it won't become an issue. Just know that this particular, and this is an example of one, this particular one has a very easy safety to flip on or flip off. It's too easy to be honest, and so that means that the detent is weak, and we could have it replaced probably, but you know, we're just going to leave it as is. And we wanted to cover it. Check out your model, check out the ones at the store if you plan to buy any 1911. Make sure that you can operate it, but it shouldn't be, you know, where you can operate it that easily. Right, so you're going to show your Dan Watson Vigil and how positive the safety is on that. Because this is the difference that we're talking about and people need to know. All right, there's the Dan Wesson from the shooting position. Very strong detent on it. You can see where I actually have to struggle just a little bit to activate it or to deactivate it. That's a much better job there. And I realize this is a much more expensive 1911, guys, but I just wanted to show you my new concealed carry Dan Wesson Vigil commander size. All right, guys, now we're going to test the Elander mags and the Ivor Johnson. And I'm going to go to a two-handed hold just in case I was just limp wristing a little bit in single hand. Uh, the Neo Mag, let's go to kneeling. Trigger's just a little heavier than I'm used to with a 1911. I'd say it's more around five pounds. Another thing I think I talked about quite a bit during the firing of this 1911, guys, was the trigger itself. So let's talk about that just real quick. It's a little different than every other 1911 that I've fired as far as how heavy it was. We're gonna include some footage here of us actually testing the weight of the trigger. I think during the shooting of the video, I thought it was between five and six pounds which would have been one of the heaviest 1911 triggers I've ever fired. It's just, it's just heavy. I mean, it firms up nicely. It firms up really nice right here. There's no give to the trigger at all. Just know that it just requires a little extra strength and a little extra poundage that you're pushing to get that hammer to fall. As far as reset, I thought it was good. And you're right back on it, right back to some pressure on the trigger. And you're right back into that six plus pounds to make that 1911 go off for the next round. So just know this particular example of one ends up that it's close to seven pounds for a 1911 trigger. All right, 11 round Metgar Mag. This specific 1911 model has caulking serrations in the front and the rear. They are pretty decent. They remind me of the Les Bear custom carry a little bit. They are plentiful and they're easy to use. You also have a chamber indicator right here on the Ivor Johnson. And I actually don't think I checked this. The barrel has a bit of movement. So again, you know, we're not talking about an ultra expensive gun here, so you can't expect everything to be precisely fit and, you know, just extremely high quality. So that little bit of movement in the barrel is to be expected, I guess. Speaking of the barrel, it is 4.25 inches. This is a commander length slide on a full size government frame. Let's cover real quick the gun's finish. This 1911 has beautifully highly polished blued flats on it and a matte blued finish on the rounded edges. So if you look at the frame itself, you can see it has like a matte style finish. And then again, here's your bluing. And up top, again, the matte finish to reduce glare. Not bad. The bluing looks pretty nice, but if you'll notice, this is something that you guys should definitely see. You see the rust or pitting underneath the finish on the slide. 
kind of weird. But you guys can definitely see that a little bit. So that is there. Just something to point out. The side picture on this 1911 is a high visibility white dot front sight and a square notch Novak style rear sight. There is no serrations or anything to reduce glare on the rear sight. So a pretty uh, plain sight picture on it. Not bad. You could change out the sights of course if you wanted to. Jim McCormick back. stock mag that comes with the gun, it's an ACK mag. The Cyber Johnson Arms 1911 comes with one magazine and it is a ACT mag. So it's an eight round mag made in Italy. It's pretty good quality. And last mag, Elander. Failure to feed. The uh, beaver tail area is beating the crap out of the web of my hand. All right guys, so what's the cost on this Ivor Johnson commander style pistol? Somewhere around $749 is what we're finding. So $749 for a 1911 that's made in the Philippines, comes over here, it's checked in Florida and distributed by Ivor Johnson. Our experience with the pistol was okay. We did have some malfunctions. Sometimes uh, you have to do a little bit of what they call the 1911 dance to get your 1911 to the point where it runs like a Dan Wesson. But that's to be expected almost on some of these lower end uh, 1911s. Anyway, overall, we thought it was okay for the money. If you wanted to go out and find one um, that was a little bit more expensive, there's some other ones to choose from. And you can watch some of our videos on those and get some other ideas. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. And if you're interested in this 1911 or anything else available from Ivor Johnson, make sure you go ahead and check out their products on their website. As always, everyone, thanks for watching the video. And remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel here on YouTube, Bread and 9mm USA, and support us on Patreon if you like for more guns and gear videos coming up in the future.